All right, hello everyone and welcome to a brand new video. This one's gonna be a little bit different. So I'm using my OBS to film this, but I'm actually trying out a new thing that Apple has called Continuity Camera. So you're gonna notice a nice angle. I'm really, really happy the way the microphone stand looks in this. And I'm actually feeding this all through my computer and I'm hoping that this will cut down a little bit on editing. Today, I'm actually gonna be sharing my post-retreat experience and talking about not only what I felt during this last week, which is honestly a little hard to talk about, but also sharing some of the photos and some of the videos that I took during this whole thing. But before I get too far into the video, I actually do want to play my video intro. So today's video is about my experience at this meditation retreat. As you guys can tell, I haven't made a video in a very long time. I haven't had a live stream in a very long time. I haven't shared any content in a very long time. And that's because I was essentially off the grid. Now, when it comes to everything that I quite enjoyed with this, it was honestly being off the grid. It was so nice to be able to get away from my devices. I left on Halloween very, very early in the morning. It was, I think I got up at like 1.20 a.m. in order to be at the airport for three. I don't think I got much more than a couple hours of sleep, if that. So, I didn't do much filming or taking pictures on the way down because I just, I was trying to conserve all of my energy for the actual travel because I knew I was going to be exhausted. We do have a few photos to share from those, that first trip. Now, a really cool, or I guess maybe mind-blowing thing is that up until this trip, I have never flown on a plane, let alone done it by myself, let alone done it internationally. So this trip had a lot of firsts in it. I had actually been on a couple of international trips without family through band trips, but we took these by tour, like by our buses, because there was like 300 of us, and the school planned the entire thing. We really didn't have to check in ourselves. It was done via the parents and guardians. We did kind of have to check out, I guess, maybe by ourselves and hand in the keys, and we had to be responsible for the keys and the key cards, but it was nothing like, you know, you take a trip with your family and someone is designated often as the one who checks in, checks out, does all the planning. And in this case, I did absolutely everything myself. I had this plan, I think, about and finalized in about June. But there was still a few things that I wasn't quite sure of, like how I was going to get from the hotel to the retreat center and all of that. And it all worked out as with everything it usually does. I want to first talk about the trip from Regina, which I will be referring to as YQR. That's the three digit letter code from Regina International Airport to CLT, which is Charlotte's. Douglas International Airport. I'm going to start off with this photo here, which is because it was so nice out, we actually were experiencing the northern lights at two o'clock in the morning. Now, I usually don't get a chance to see the northern lights at this time. I'm always asleep because I need my sleep in order to function, and I'm just not one to go out and chase the aurora at like one or two o'clock in the morning. That being said, this time, if you're gonna have a good night for the aurora, is usually the time to get it. And unfortunately, my photo was ruined a little bit by the reflection on the glass because we really didn't have time to stop and for me to take proper photos, but I did want to get this. Now, this photo is edited a little bit because I wasn't able to capture the right amount of exposure and grab the colors. Like, when I took the photo, it honestly looked like it does 
to the naked eye, which is a little bit of a hazy mist. And if you've got a clear night in Saskatchewan and there's a hazy mist to the north, generally you're looking at the northern lights. People think that when they look at the northern lights that it is that magical dancing thing that you see from the tourist photos and videos from northern community, like very northern communities like in Alaska or the northern Canada. And it's not like that in the south. Like it's almost like a green mist. That being said, this photo, despite it being ruined by the reflection on the glass from the dashboard of the vehicle, it was beautiful. And I was able to watch it pretty much until we turned north and then started to have, unfortunately, the lights from Regina interfere with it. The next photo I took is my first view out of the airplane. I didn't actually take any photos in the airport just because it was pretty busy. Our flight was full that morning and there was another flight that was also pretty full that morning so there's a lot of people walking around and I was honestly quite nervous at this point because you get to this point and it becomes very 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 real. I took a photo from my seat and as you can see I was pretty much right in front of the one engine and I loved the window seat I had. I pretty much sat in the same spot in both airplanes but a little bit different of a spot compared to the two airplanes. So one, this one was a little bit in front of the one right engine. The one from Toronto to Charlotte and then reversed was on the other side of the plane, pretty much right over top of the wing, which I'll show you when we get to that photo. But as you can see, the ground crew is getting the plane loaded up with the baggage. Here's the view from the airplane there. This photo, you, some of you have probably seen this photo. I got a capture of the sunrise as we were flying towards the east and it was absolutely beautiful. I actually wasn't able to really sleep on the plane, so I decided that I would take an opportunity to take these photos out of the airplane. I love watching sunrises from the ground here in Saskatchewan. If you're able to get out into the open, it's some of the most beautiful things you can witness is the sunrise and sunset. But seeing it from the air is just a new perspective and it was just absolutely beautiful. Although I really wasn't able to sleep, I spent a lot of time actually meditating on this trip, especially in the airplane. And I think it did help a little bit with the rest factor. So here's a photo that I took during my layover. This is actually pretty much right where my gate was to fly to Charlotte. In Toronto, they have a specific designated area for US flights so that you can clear customs before you get to the US, which is really, really, really nice. Especially when you land in the US, you're not rushed to clear customs and get out of the airport. You basically essentially land as a domestic flight and it is amazing. I love the pre-clearance. It just gives you one less thing to stress about when you land. And so this is after I cleared customs and gotten through security again. At this point, I think it was about 12 o'clock in the afternoon and keeping in mind at this point, it was still daylight savings time. So it was two hours ahead of what my body was and my body really hadn't slept the night before so I was absolutely exhausted and you might be able to see that in the photo if you can't I'm hiding it awfully well because I was exhausted at this point the layover for me ended up being a little bit longer than originally planned because our flight actually got into Toronto early we had a bit of a tailwind going there so it was a little bit of a rougher flight it was okay because you got there a little bit early and there was a lot less stress I didn't rush at all getting through customs and security. Air Canada let me know that I would have to pass through both and my goal was to get on the other side of both of them as quickly as possible so that I'd have enough time to eat because I knew I probably wasn't going to be eating until I got to Charlotte so that was really really important. It worked out really good now. I was also quite nervous so eating was a little slower than normal. Here is a picture from the regional jet that I was on. So I took a regional jet from Toronto to Charlotte. It was a CRJ 100 200 so despite having a carry-on luggage i actually had to what is called sky check it because anything with rolly wheels will not fit into the overhead bins on these planes so you have to actually sky check or valet check your baggage which i thought worked perfectly fine i wasn't worried about it at all like so you put it in toronto they used a kind of a rolly thingy you put it onto there they threw it in put it into the plane and then when we got to Charlotte the baggage was right on the jetway so it was essentially as close to a carry-on bag as possible but you didn't have to worry about your baggage at that point I kind of actually liked the valet check I'm a little weird maybe in that when talking to other people who fly a lot I know a lot of people wish they could just take the baggage on and I completely get it because you gotta they make you wait until all the baggage is off for the sky checked baggage or the valet checked baggage before they let you off the plane so that you don't forget about your baggage but it wasn't a huge 
issue because the jets are so small. So there's only like 50 people on, on a on a full flight. So it doesn't take long to really empty the aircraft. And the view is not great from this because it was actually cloudy from Toronto to Charlotte pretty much the whole way down. So it wasn't a great view, but it, it worked. That might be it for all of the photos that I took from the actual flight down there. As far as the first two flights in my life, I did really, really well. The only issues I had with my head was dizziness upon kind of ascending up and descending. So whenever there was a significant change or the plane kind of, you know, turns in a sharp manner, that was really the only time I had notice the motion sickness a little bit. Now, speaking of motion sickness, I didn't get air sick, so that's a great thing, and I absolutely loved the air travel. It was so relaxing and so peaceful. I don't know if it's because I have a med regular meditation practice or not, but it was just amazing, and I loved it. I can't wait to be able to fly again. I definitely will be doing that again in the future. At the hotel, I was wearing my supporter merch. You guys have seen it many times on the channel. And so I was actually able to find some people who were going to the retreat and find a ride at the same time, which ended up being a really, really good thing because the getting to the retreat center from anywhere in Boone can be very, very, very difficult without a vehicle. I think the only thing that I would ask them to change about everything in the area, it would be make it a little bit easier for people who don't have a vehicle because they've come through Charlotte. Now, I know the idea of the Hickory Hop shuttle was to actually get you to the retreat center, but just didn't time out right with the way my flights worked. So it would be okay if you could fly into the retreat center the day before and fly out the day after and book it that way. Like if you could extend your stay on either side of your actual event, that would make it much better. And unfortunately, we just couldn't do that because they weren't open. So <laughs> it wasn't a possibility. I guess my suggestion would be to the retreat center to try and you know, make an exception, especially if you have a large group coming in from all over the country and all over the, and from some international destinations, you know, they're not going to have an easy access to transportation. This ended up working for the better for me because I got to do something I didn't think I was going to be, have the confidence to do on my own. And I didn't think that I was going to be able to do it because I just wouldn't be comfortable and wouldn't have ability to do it, which is explore the area a little bit. In this photo, you actually can see some of the scenery in the area. Boone is a very, very nice area. This is actually a little bit closer to Blowing Rock, but they're so close that I consider Boone Blowing Rock kind of the same area. Uh, sorry to the locals there if you don't really do that, but this would be mountains to me. I'm from the prairies. Everything is so flat. I actually got more motion sickness from the windy roads than I did from the airplane. That gives you perspective anyways. Some of those curves were so tight, and this is just the start of the nice beautiful scenery. More of the trails here, so nice beautiful trees. Unfortunately, the leaves had already had their peak by the time we were there, and they had had a lot of rain, so it knocked a lot of the leaves off of the trees, but it was still beautiful to see all of the differences in the scenery. And it was also a very nice day, like you could get away with a lighter sweater and be okay. And then there's this. So we were actually going to go and look at this quilting shop because the people I were with were really into it. Unfortunately, we got there and found out that they were closed on that particular day, but we ended up finding some really nice trails and had a little bit of a walk, which all of us needed because we had had a little bit of a <laughs> crazy time on flights and a lot of sitting the day before. We needed to stretch out our legs and we knew that we'd be sitting a lot in the next coming days as we did our several hours of meditation a day. So we decided to go again out onto the trails, but then we found this beautiful house. This kind of reminded me of what might have been used for like slave trade back in the day. So we are in the deeps fairly far south at here. So yeah, there's this one. And then this photo is actually the same type of thing, but it is zoomed out and it's a very, very nice area and a very, very nice place. I actually wish I would have had a little bit more of a chance to explore this area a little bit, but like I said, I wasn't familiar with it and didn't have really good access to transportation, so I didn't really want to get too far away from where I was planned to be, and then I think with time, I would get used to it and be okay with it, and it would be nice to actually have the confidence to be able to take myself and travel my by myself, but you know, this ended up working out for the better. Because it had just been like the fall leaves had just fallen. There was leaves absolutely everywhere. And 
these leaves were huge compared to the leaves that I'm used to here. So like giant oak leaves that were like, my hands are small. So it's maybe not a good comparison to say like, these were bigger than the size of my hand, but they were huge, humongous leaves, like just beautiful. And then this tree is actually from a walk that we did through some shops in Blowing Rock, which is a community that's just, I think it's kind of technically south. I'm not sure of direction. Like I said, you wind so much up and down those roads, you get lost really, really quickly, especially if you're not familiar with the area. But this was a beautiful, beautiful, I think it was a Japanese maple tree is what I was told it was from the lady who was with me. And I just, the red just reminded me so much of Canada that I had to take a picture of it. So I've actually zoomed this in, but it was absolutely beautiful. And I think there was actually one of these trees at the reception area in the Art of Living Retreat Center. And it was just beautiful too, but I got only this one. I absolutely loved it. It was just beautiful colors. And actually when you were near Charlotte, it was beautiful there as well because the leaves were just starting to change in the Charlotte area. So that was really nice as well. The retreat center was an amazing venue. I absolutely loved it there. It felt like if I had to describe my picture of heaven, this would probably be that. The views were breathtaking. The air was so nice. I mean, I'm used to nice air in Saskatchewan for the most part. Like we don't have a huge amount of bad air, but there can be some times where it really, really stinks either from livestock or farms or, you know, when the crops are being harvested which happens in the fall like normally I go somewhere it's changing leaves and I am just a stuffed up mess because you're dealing with the dust from harvest in the art of living retreat center this was not the case I had no problems with allergies I didn't have a stuffy nose I didn't get a sore throat I may end up having trouble with my voice by the end of this because this is the most I've talked in like probably a week so bear with me if my voice starts to cut in and out. I have been talking more over the last couple of days, so I'm hoping that's not going to be much of an issue, but you never know. Let's get into some of these pictures from the retreat center. Now, due to the fact that this was silence, and I made it a very strict rule, particularly about how much I checked my phone and how much I used my phone. I honestly didn't even touch my phone for about three or four days. It was kind of the evening of the night before we came out of silence that I started to use my devices, and it was just more to slowly ease into the transition of what I knew was going to be catching up on a lot of social media. So I did it so that it wasn't quite an overwhelming experience the next day. We also had some bad weather that one day and because we had bad weather and I wanted to continue with my insight timer meditations, I decided I would bring my phone with me and that meant I automatically went to listening to music while I meditated actually. I just put on softer music, a softer playlist and listened to that while I was in the meditation hall because I wasn't able to be outside. That's the only time I really touched my devices. This is the view from reception. So the reception is underneath the main dining hall. So there's two layers. So there's like the one level and then there's the second level. And so I have not only the view from this level, but I do have another view from the top level. This is a view from the hill where the main meditation center is. These Two buildings that you see in the photo here are actually additional meditation halls. They have smaller meditation halls. Because of the size of our group, we were in the main meditation hall building, which was massive. It made me feel really small. And I mean, I feel really small. We had a group of like a hundred people and we were able to spread out really, really nicely. It was so nice actually, cause you got your space. And actually the main dining hall too, like, when we started our silence because all of our meals passed the first meal and except for the last meal on lunch the final day, we're all in silence. Now, some of you may be surprised. You're like, oh my goodness, I could never do that. Like my meal times or when I socialize, I totally completely get it. And I was really, really worried about how this was going to work too, because that's generally when I tend to talk to people as well. Like I have gotten used to that because at work, you know, you deal with people all the time and you catch up in the break room and you're around the table. So I was honestly a little concerned about this too, but 
it worked out really nicely. So people were able to spread out in the dining hall and it worked really, really well. You wouldn't think it would work, but it, it works. Here's another view, actually a better view of the kind of looking down into the lower part from the main meditation hall. And they've got these beautiful, I thought they were doves, but some people have said that they're swans. So I'm not sure which ones they actually are, but they reminded me more of like almost doves, like the symbol of peace kind of, world peace kind of thing. But you know, swans are nice too. To me, they represented peace. That's a very good descriptor of this entire property, to be honest. Like, you're so much in nature, and if you're an outdoors person, you would absolutely love this. If you're into hiking too, like there were some trails around the property. I didn't actually get onto the trails. I, I attempted a couple times, but they were very, very slippery because the leaves were freshly fallen and there had been some rain, but it was just a little bit too steep for me and beyond my ability. So unfortunately, I didn't get out on the trails like what I had wanted to. I did not want to end up having to use my travel insurance. So that's why I didn't go out on the trails. Otherwise, I would have loved to and I probably would have taken my phone to take photos even though I was technically in silence and trying to stay away from my devices. And then this is actually a view from where I was staying in a retreat room. Now, I stayed actually alone. I requested to be alone. I did this for a couple reasons. One, I do not really get along well with roommates. I found that out in university. But number two, I didn't want to have the temptation to break silence. I really wanted to commit to the silence because I knew that committing to the silence would make the most out of this entire experience. This was the view from my room and it was beautiful. Watching the sunrise, I would be up, you know, 7 seven thirty. the sun rose at 7 30 up until the last day when it was actually up by the time that it was early in the morning because the time changed this was a picture of the sunrise i think the very first day i had to grab my phone and i'm just like ah, it's not gonna matter if i don't maintain my devices i'm not gonna touch my devices for several days after this i woke up and my jaw dropped at how beautiful this sunrise was. If you were walking up from about 7.15 to 7.45 to go have breakfast, which I often did, I stopped so many times on my walk to the dining hall because everywhere you looked, you just had to stop, take pause, and take in the moment because it was just amazing and so beautiful. I can't even describe it to you guys of how amazing and breathtaking it was like this photo kind of captures it but i cannot possibly put words to it the last photo i took this was on the saturday when it was just before it started to pour rain the entire day we woke up and it was very 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 foggy like so foggy you could barely see a few feet in front of you. This is actually one of the least amount of fog that I seen that particular day. It was actually a little scary because there were cars able to drive and you wanted to make, almost wanted to have reflective gear on and make sure that they were actually seeing me, but they were pretty good at, you know, paying attention to make sure that there weren't any pedestrians. So I'll give them that. The next thing I kind of want to get into is a bit of a room tour. So I was staying in a retreat center room. So they had a hotel style and they had retreat style. And I gotta say, I absolutely love this. Now I wouldn't with roommates because you'd be sharing one big area, but because I was by myself, I felt like I had so much space to myself. So let's get into this room tour now. So you walk in and there's a closet to your left and then the bathroom is to the right. So we'll go into here. I turn on the light so it'll change a little bit in brightness. There's a shower. The showers actually had really good pressure. It was really nice. It was like a hotel. And it was nice because they gave you like all the things you needed. I brought most of my stuff though because I use medicated shampoo. And then there's a closet. The bed I stayed in is the one right in front of you there. And these were the two extra beds. And my suitcase there and then my water bottle and all of that. One of the best things I did actually was taking an empty water bottle through security. I saved so much money on not paying for water. And then here's a beautiful view again. The next thing I want to share with you guys is this panel shot from in front of the dining hall. So before we started silence, I did a little bit of filming because I knew I'd want to have a little bit of content from this. So 
Here is a view from the dining hall, just a absolutely gorgeous pano view. And it was one of the only times it was clear. It was absolutely beautiful. And I, I can't even put into words how much I enjoyed this place. Yeah, so here's, we'll just sit here for a second. Let's get into some post-retreat thoughts now. One of the things that I really found to be the case was, I am, I knew this too, I am so addicted to my devices, whether it's on the computer or on my phone, I really do spend way too much time on screens and not enough enjoying the present moment. When you really take a deep dive into this presence and all of that, you find out just how much you're actually not living in the moment despite the fact that you feel like it and you tell yourself and you're lying to yourself about how much you actually are living in the moment. It's very, very hard to put this whole experience into words. Not only was the, the retreat itself, meeting people that I have known online for several years, meeting people that I spend a lot of time with virtually and getting a chance to meet them in person is just amazing, which was another awesome thing. But this time in silence, just, I, I don't have the words, guys. I would just suggest that if you ever get an opportunity and you want to do something like this, that you take the opportunity because you will learn so much and you'll get to understand why it's important to do these kind of things. Like I can't really put it into words and it's not fair to. I know when I was writing on my Facebook page, like my personal page about my post-retreat thoughts, I was bawling my eyes out at the same time I was writing it, but I just couldn't properly express my emotions and my feelings into words, so I'm not going to be able to do it now. The one thing that definitely happened for me was that everything became so vivid during the silence. It feels like nature just comes alive, like even the gentlest of wind. I actually thought there was something in the trees because the trees were so loud. The birds in the morning when they were like foraging for food or the woodpeckers on tapping the wood for food they were just so loud and it was so fascinating to watch them do their thing and that's not something that we usually have time to stop and do like normally we're such in a rush to get from point a to point b or we're such in a rush to do a b c that you're not really seeing what's happening around you and there is honestly so much that is happening around you it is just amazing at how much you miss when your nose is in a device feels like constantly like we are so addicted to these devices i i feel weird saying that because i'm using my devices right now to film this video but it's really really important to stress that if you get a chance i think it's important for everyone to get this moment to unplug, even if it's for like one or two days. Like we should all be able to put our devices down for one whole day. I would almost guarantee that many people would struggle that, like maybe not the silence part, but find a way to put your devices down for one whole day. And I think you'll get a lot out of that. Now, if you get a chance though, to do a silent retreat of some kind, which it's very hard to do anything other than meditation, in my opinion. I don't know how you do that with anything but meditation because I'm not, I'm, I just don't know enough about it. But if you guys get the chance to try something like this, I say go for it. You're going to learn so much more about yourself in those few days. Like maybe take it easy on which one you choose, like do the one that's right for you. But you're going to learn so much about yourself and you're not really going to have the ability to express it into words actually one of the most interesting things that we did during this silent retreat was poetry rounds. Now, poetry is not my thing. It's not the way I express my creative thoughts, but video is. So I was naturally recording a little bit and all of that because that's how I express my creativity. But this poetry that people came up with, oh, it was fantastic. And you have an appreciation for the arts when you make art yourself. And no matter what that is, whether it's, you know, writing music or whether it's poetry, whether it's making videos, taking photographs, whatever that is, you find a way to express it in a very genuine way when you're in silence. Like it's now the most 
amazing thing. I haven't really talked about this much, but for me, my head was anything but silent. I felt like I had a radio station of top hits playing in my head 24 seven with one particular song from Pink that is quite new and I really like. It's called All I Know So Far. Obviously I can't play it because of copyright, but go and check it this song out. This song for me is the definition of what authenticity is. And my goal in life is to live an authentic, possible life as possible. This song just spoke volumes to me and it was on repeat during the whole retreat. That and um, a song called Clouds that I watched from a movie that was about a guy who was, or a young kid actually, who was dying from a terminal form of cancer. He wrote this song while, was in, while he was in an airplane and he titled it Clouds because he liked the view from the clouds. And it's a very powerful song. I strongly encourage you to check it out. The reason why I felt like I was in the clouds is because a lot of times we could see the top of the clouds from where we were. So this song came into my head as well. As well as Life's a Dance from John Michael Montgomery, I believe his name is. And this has been one of my favorite songs all of my life, but it's about appreciating the moment as well as live like you're dying. So that was another amazing song that appreciating the present moment and truly experiencing what we're all meant to experience in the present moment. The weirdest thing that happened for me was on, I think it was day, between day, day three to day five. So closer to the end of the retreat, we were outside. It was an absolutely beautiful day. Most of us spent the, our free time outside that afternoon because it was just gorgeous. I think it was about 15 to 20 degrees Celsius. And I spent this time walking around this grass maze that they have. And the weirdest thing was that in front, kind of at an angle, there's a fire pit actually where some of the retreats who aren't silent will have fire pits every night and kind of use it as a get together. And they have these giant, huge boulders and pile of rocks. And the weirdest thing that happened to me was I had this genuine, unconditional love for this pile of rocks and the moss on the trees and the bark of the trees. It was so vivid. I can't even put into words what this was like. It was just so difficult to describe. Another thing that was really, really powerful about this entire experience was the amount of energy a hundred people can put into a room with not only meditation, but maintaining the silence. Having a room full of a hundred people maintain complete silence it's remarkable. Now, one of my favorite things actually during the day was at night, and that was what are called singing bowls. So go on to YouTube and like after you're done watching this video and just type in singing bowls. And the lady who was doing this for us just knew how to work with sound. And it was so relaxing, so peaceful, and it was like the perfect end to the night now it's unfortunate a little bit because it did break silence like it wasn't completely silent but when that last night where it was absolutely pouring rain and we were having the singing bowls the combination of the natural sound with the sound from the singing bowls and her instruments and all of the things that she used for the sound meditation was beyond words and how well it worked like i can't even put it into words except for it's something that you would have to experience it and the thing is is you could never probably imitate that because the conditions were part natural sound from the outside environment and then part what was going on in that particular session it was just beyond words there was a lot of silent sitting and it almost turned into a sound meditation that last day because the rain was so loud on the roof like it was so vivid that it was like you were listening to her sound meditation the entire day but she was playing like just rain sounds it was amazing but it was so much more because it was a natural sound and then we had also the crows that you could hear. There was an airplane route right over top of the retreat center. So there's airplanes. I notice airplanes generally quite loudly because I don't live anywhere near an airport. But those planes were so, so loud because everything around was 
absolutely silent and that energy definitely carried for a long time post retreat and i would still say it's still here i am very very thankful actually that i've had a chance to take some extra vacation time after this number one it's been an easier transition but number two i just plunge into silence occasionally like this is the most noise i've made i think in a week but i'm sure my voice is starting to struggle a little bit that energy from everyone in that room that made a commitment to this entire experience it's not something you can put into words and i don't think it would be fair to put it into words getting into another really clear insight that i had during this was that i quite enjoyed the travel but traveling alone gave me a completely different experience from anything I'd ever had before. It was mind-blowing because it forced me to talk to people that I normally probably wouldn't have because I would be talking with my family. I also was able to meet and talk to some amazing people, not only on the way there, not so much on that on the way there, like people weren't quite as chatty, but on the way home, I met two amazing people. One while waiting for my shuttle to come pick me up to take me to the airport and the second was in the airport waiting for a significant flight delay back from Toronto to Regina. That was amazing and to hear about the difference in retreat experiences because the first one, the first lady actually was at the retreat center but at a different event and so it was really interesting to share as much as I possibly could in that moment while managing to talk with that lady and then it was nice meeting the nice lady in the airport where i was absolutely exhausted because i felt like i had been running i didn't realize my flight was delayed and i didn't you know like i said i was in a little bit of a rush because i didn't want to miss my plane so i would have made it actually for the one uh boarding time that was on my notification but the plane ended up being delayed actually two or three more times after that. The One of the most amazing things that I've learned throughout this entire experience with meditation and living in the present moment and this awakening journey, as we call it, is the universe always finds a way to work things out. And if it's meant to be, it'll always happen. With me, I have intense anxiety. I had intense anxiety, very, very intense anxiety, when my initial flight from Charlotte to Toronto got delayed, not only by... 20 minutes by about 40 minutes because I had about a two hour window to work with if things were on time in Toronto. Now I should have known that it would probably get delayed because they can actually delay flights for connecting passengers and all of that but it was just nice to have that extra delay. Now I want to get into the last little part here which I haven't spent any time on which was I got into meditation through one of my I, I'm gonna have to probably say this is my U favorite YouTube channel. It's getting close between Zubin's channel and Angelo's channel now because I'm so deeply into this journey. But the two channels are ZDogMD and Simply Always Awake. The person that we did this retreat through, his name is Dr. Angelo DeLulo. And he has been, I've known about him for a couple of years now, I think is when he first came onto Z's channel or Z Dog MD's channel. I I will be saying Z in place of Z Dog MD. I got to meet both of these people, which are basically my two favorite YouTube channels. The third one, the only way I'd be able to complete the trifecta now probably would be to meet Dr. Mike, because without Dr. Mike, I would not be in this position right now. It was through Dr. Mike and his interview with. Z that I found Z and it was Z who got me into meditation to begin with. It was because he was talking about it on Supporter Lives, which I've been a part of his supporter group now for, I think I was telling people 2019, but I actually think it was December 2018 now. I've been a follower and subscriber of his since 2018. I believe it was November actually that I found his parodies after watching that first initial interview that was recommended to me on youtube i just can't the one of the most surprising things about this entire thing guys is that i am here because i clicked a button on a social media site and on youtube which is just mind-boggling to me or i search something like this there are some things that change your life and they seem so insignificant when you do them and this changed my life. This meeting these two people not only was the highlight of my year, but 
I would say it's very, very close to the highlight of my life so far. These two people, Angelo and Z, are two amazing guys. And the reception that I got from both of them was beyond words and I mean if you guys are ever watching this I still can't put it into words for those of you who are my friends and family you will have seen the selfie that I shared and ask me if you're watching this for the story behind that selfie whenever you get a chance because I'd love to share it but it's not going to be shared on my public social media so if you're wanting it not even my private technically private social media it's it's something that's so personal that I don't even want to ruin it by putting it out publicly so if you guys want the story behind that and I may offer and volunteer that when I am talking with you guys in person because it's actually on my phone and I'm still in awe every time I look at the photo the best way I can describe this is it's so personal that I'm not sharing the selfie it was just like meeting two people that I sort of felt like I knew. Now, Z more than Angelo, I didn't, I didn't have the, I was so nervous to meet Z the first day. I was actually shaking afterwards and I was a little bit overwhelmed to be honest. I am very, very introverted. So for me to approach someone that I feel is still a stranger, despite how many hours I've spent with the supporter group online, and I feel like we do know each other because of our community, it's still a stranger. It's still someone that you've never met in person. That being said, my introverted self is like screaming, saying, you don't want to approach this person. <laughs> they are a stranger. However, it got easier as time went on. When I finished, I f was easily able to approach both of them. I felt like I didn't know Angelo at all, except for through the content and through his interviews that he's done with Z. So that was a little bit tougher of an approach, but I'm happy I did because it was really, really nice to connect with the both of them. It was something that I was very nervous about and I'm happy that I got over that hurdle. I will be posting the selfie with Z on my supporters only locals page. So if you guys want to see that and you're not friends with me on Facebook, go and check that out. It is $2 for the month. So it's not that much of a barrier to entry, but I do need to have it under a little bit of a barrier to entry because of how personal and what this photo means to me. And I hope you guys understand that. I know a lot of people, they would meet their favorite YouTuber and they plaster it all over social media. I know that's very common for me. However, because of the circumstances behind the selfie and the story behind it, and just how much it meant to me, this whole experience, I do not feel the same way about it that many people probably would. I have decided to keep this to my very, very, very close group. I hope you understand that, and I hope you understand why. Maybe at some point, I will feel comfortable posting it, but as for right now, it is staying among family, friends, and my supporters. And now I want to share some highlights of the trip home. So as I said, the trip home was amazing in a couple of ways of meeting a couple of people that I probably only really talked to because I hadn't really talked to any human beings in five days. So the introverting in me at that point is actually becomes a little extroverted. <laughs> so I'm a little bit more open to talking with strangers at that point because I haven't talked, I hadn't, I really hadn't talked to many people at that point. So I wanted to talk and you know, I just felt comfortable at that point to open up a little bit. And it's, I can't describe, I can't describe the reason which made me open up, but it, I did. And that's what's important. On my way to Charlotte, I only took about one photo. And the reason, there's a reason behind this and I'm not going to get into why, but you know, I didn't really, f I was so in the moment. When I get very in the moment, I don't actually take that many photos. I'm I am like that even with family events. So like if I'm like at Christmas or, you know, we're having Thanksgiving together as a group, I rarely take any photos. I actually have to physically remind myself, oh, I should take a photo of this because I'm so in the moment that I forget. However, I really wanted some really nice f shots coming out of the airport. My, I had my dad that requested me to 
film a takeoff video so once I filmed one I really started to enjoy the filming and I was getting a little bit into the filming in the end. All right so here we are about to take off. The plane's just speeding up now and I'm just gonna sit in silence here while we watch this video. One of the things that I enjoyed actually the most about takeoff and landing was how fast you actually travel along the ground. It is one of the most thrilling feelings and then that feeling when you first initially lift off the earth. I love that feeling honestly. Like it's my favorite part of the flight. The landings were a little bit interesting actually. So I found the landing in Charlotte going down there was actually pretty smooth. But the, la the roughest landing was definitely landing into Regina the end there but we'll get into that in a second so yeah there's the liftoff and it was pretty much right at sunset i think it was about 5 30 or so that night we had been delayed about 40 minutes or so getting into the next one this is taking off from toronto and it was very very late here it was i think about 9 45 eastern maybe even well maybe not yeah, I think it was about between 9.30 and 9.45 Eastern. And this is a three-hour flight from Toronto to Regina. And this is actually the last little bit that I seen it was clear. Most of this flight was very, very, very cloudy. It was, we were flying in a cloud. I couldn't even tell where I was. I could barely tell that you were even moving, actually. One of the things I loved about the GTA was how many lights there were and because it was so clear, it just looked like a huge area of lights from the air. It was absolutely beautiful in Toronto on Monday night. So this was the 7th. Sometimes you just need to sit in silence. And now... For the final video I'm going to share, this is landing into Regina. And I tell you, this was a little bit of a shock to my system. So in Charlotte, it was about 23 degrees Celsius that day. And when I landed in Regina, I landed directly into winter. So it was about minus 15 and it felt like it was about minus 30 that night. And I was absolutely freezing when I walked out of the airport. It was a huge shock to the system, but... I'm just going to let you guys listen to this one or watch this one in silence as well. Partly of that is that I'm losing my voice because I've been recording for a while. But as you can see, it's very, very, very wintry. And actually, the there was a lot of snow. I wasn't, I didn't realize that they had gotten this much snow. When I left, as you can, if you went back and looked at that initial photo from the flight that I took, it was, there was no snow at all. There we are, on the ground. I was actually really impressed with myself at how well I did holding the camera because this was a very rough landing. I thank you for watching this if you made it all the way. If you're wanting to find me on social media, you can do so at the following links there on my social media pages. This will allow you to keep in contact as far as a live on Sunday. I know I said when I left that I probably would resume lives. However, at this point, I don't know if I will be doing that or not. I may use this as the video for this week despite the fact that I am recording this not live but we'll see how long this turns out to be and what the video turns out I may or may not do a live this week I will let you guys know via social media if there will be a live I'm hoping to have this video out by tomorrow it will be a different release date for this one but I do want to be able to share it so you can follow me on Instagram 
Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, all of the places. And you can also follow me on Locals. The link is in the description to find me on Locals. It's ashleystewart.locals.com. And from there, you can always become a free member. However, to participate in the comments and to see supporter-only posts, like on Patreon, which it's very similar to Patreon, is that you have to do subscribe for the $2 US a month. So that is the lowest I could set it unfortunately, but, you know, if you guys want to see more behind-the-scenes stuff, definitely go over there. I have, I have to yet to work out what the best way to use that particular section of Locals is. I haven't quite figured it out yet, but if you have any suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I thank you for joining me for this particular video. I hope you guys have enjoyed watching this as much as I enjoyed sharing my experience. Like I said, it is very, very difficult to share an experience like this. Like it is beyond words. And it's actually not fair to even try to put it into words because you end up just not being able to put it into words properly. And you do it a bit of an injustice to even try because it's, it's beyond words. That's it for this one. Bye everyone.